You're listening to Bulldogs Live. Once again, here's your host, the voice of the Bulldogs, Scott Howard. Hey, welcome back to Bulldogs Live with Coach Kirby Smart. Uh, Thanks for being along on this Thursday night as the dogs have been getting ready for Kentucky this week. We are here in Athens, and our friends from uh, Piedmont are here tonight as our guest audience. Good to see you folks. Thanks for being here tonight. Of course, Coach Kirby Smart is here as well. And, uh, Coach, another good week uh, in the books for you guys as you prepare for another game? Yes. um, We had good practices, and I think our guys kind of respect the physicality you have to play Kentucky with. So we had some get-after-it type practices, and – those are always good to, to see. I know as a coach, when you, when you know they're ready to put the pads on and, and hit each other, that, that they're ready for the game. Uh, did you get that same feeling last week in that in that win over Auburn? Yeah. I mean, I, I, our guys have been up to the task each and every week in terms of uh, what they have to do to go out and play and uh, what the preparation's like. And, you know, you can't get, can't get bored with the uh, simple things. You know, I think from here on out, I mean, everything is is difficult, and this is going to be the the halfway point uh, in the regular season, and uh, uh, just about everything left is in the regular season anyway is conference. So it's is it going to be a similar preparation week in and week out to get ready for each of those opponents the rest of the way? Yeah, I, the preparation every week is the same. I know that was boring to you guys because y'all want some new, like, uh, innovative way to do it. But preparation is preparation, and uh, we don't we don't take it lightly. Um, we try to change things up when we can, but it takes what it takes, and you can't uh, you can't reinvent the wheel each week. You got to work hard and keep getting better. Well, you have a lot of guys on this team that that do that with regularity. They try to, and if they don't, we push them to. So we got a lot of guys that are young that don't too, and they have to learn how the older guys do it if they want to be able to play. Do they seem to to take to that? I mean, it, it seems like a, a pretty good, strong, cohesive unit, and you've talked about the leadership on this team before, and uh, those guys get involved with, with the younger guys when they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. I would imagine they, they get in line with that. Well, they try to. I think it's always hard that freshman year, If at this point in time, if you're not playing a major role, sometimes you begin to doubt that you will. And uh, when your t- number's called, just like when, you, you know, you, you're not expected to, to have to perform and you have to, you're not ready. So uh, we try to get them ready every week and tell everybody that you don't know when your number's going to get called. It was good to see a couple of vet, uh, veterans uh, return last week that you, you hadn't had previously uh, due to some injury. But uh, Javon Bullard, uh, was uh, was back in the lineup, and uh, Lad McConkey, just two of the guys, and they played very well for you last week. Yeah, it was great to have Bull back out there helping direct things. He makes a lot of plays for us. Um, and Lad had some big third down conversions, and uh, it's really great to have those guys back. Kendall got to play a little bit and uh, is a little healthier this week too. Georgia and Kentucky coming up on uh, Saturday night at uh, 7 o'clock. 7.05 is the official kick time for the uh, the Bulldogs and the Wildcats, and uh, what is traditionally, what is this game, what do you think of when you see the matchup, Georgia and Kentucky? What's the first thing that comes into your mind? Uh, usually cold. It's always <laughs> been cold up there or here, and um, it's been raining sometimes, and uh, it's always that. But then I think of Coach Stoops and the way he coaches his team and the way he builds his team is around the, the two lines of scrimmages. And they've always been really physical up front and stubborn with a run game, and they've really been hard to run the ball on. After the game, this is one of those where you, you sit in the locker room and you just kind of take a deep breath and <laughs> enjoy the moment after all that pounding for the previous three hours, I would imagine. Yeah, it's not me. I don't have to do the pounding, thank God. Uh, it's it's definitely those guys, and they uh, they get after it, and it is a physical game. It's uh, the Bulldogs and the Wildcats again on uh, Saturday night. Our coverage starts at uh, 3 p.m., here on the Bulldog Sports Network for your Bulldog football Saturday night. So we hope you can join us for that. Stay with us. We've got questions for the coach from uh, the hashtag Ask Coach Smart on social media. It's brought to you by Greenpoint Ag. Greenpoint Ag, farmer-owned and locally focused. This is Bulldogs Live with Coach Kirby Smart. It's presented by Wells Fargo, an official sponsor of the Georgia Bulldogs. We'll take a timeout, come back for your questions for the coach right after this on the Georgia Bulldogs Sports Network. Welcome back, Bulldogs Live with Coach Kirby Smart, our uh, program presented by Wells Fargo, an official sponsor of the Georgia Bulldogs. And dog fans, be sure to check out the uh, G Shop at georgiadogs.com for exclusive releases of Nike Game Day official apparel, just like the coaches wear. Visit georgiadogs.com and the G Shop 
today. Our friends from Piedmont are here as our audience tonight. We thank you folks for being here. And uh, we've got a question from our audience. This is Tammy. Hi, Tammy. Welcome to the show. Hi, Scott. Hey, fire Coach. away with uh, your question. Hey, Tammy. Um, I want to know how do you keep the team from being distracted by the sideline visitors and all the excited fans on the Jumbotron? <laughs> I don't think I actually keep them from being distracted. I think sometimes I look around and uh, they jump up there and start watching that uh, Jumbotron. But as far as the visitors, um, they're usually distracted by them in warm-ups because I think everybody likes to check out the opposing team and the other team's fans, and um, there's a lot going on. I think our, our uh, stadium crew and our game day management crew do, do a great job of um, keeping the fans engaged, whether that's music, the Jumbotron, or whatever. But our players shouldn't be paying attention to it, and uh, maybe the ones that aren't playing do, and we might have to do something about it. But thanks for the question. Let's grab one from uh, hashtag Ask Coach Smart. It's brought to you by Greenpoint Ag. Greenpoint Ag, farmer owned and locally focused uh, from Jack and Valdosta. Uh, what were some of the takeaways from Auburn that maybe the fans didn't pick up on? Uh, takeaways, it was a physical, really tough ball game. Um, we knew going into the game that uh, when you play in those type rivalry games, you can throw out records, you can throw out uh, rankings, you can throw, you can throw it all out. I, I was there for – nine years and was at Alabama and had that experience and played here against uh, teams when, when Georgia and Auburn play. So it's one of those games that you go in knowing what it's going to be like and you've got to play for the next moment. you got to keep playing for the next moment and keep going and try to win as many moments as you can. And uh, we were fortunate to win more moments at the end than we did at the beginning, and that was probably the, the outcome of the game that, that affected it the most. Uh, we have another question uh, from last week, and uh, this is from Donald in Athens. What was the tone of your message at halftime last week? I believe it was tied, wasn't it? Was it 10-10? Yeah, it was 10-10. Yeah, something was like that. Stay the course. I mean, again, we were going to open the second half with the ball, and uh, we knew we were getting the, the extra possession in the second half, and that was important to utilize that, make adjustments, um, keep talking about what we talked about, keeping our composure, you know, the, 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 nobody – outside those lines was going to dictate the, the outcome of the game to, to focus on what you had to do play by play, and that was really the message. Uh, Chet from Athens, Georgia, sent this question in. How well do you know Coach Stoops at Kentucky, and what can you say about the job he has done there? Incredible job. I, I want to say somebody said he's the longest tenured coach um, in the SEC outside of uh, uh, maybe Coach Saban, and it's remarkable what he's been able to do. He's had such consistency. He recruits at a high level. Um, all his teams have a, an identity of toughness. And, um, I mean, the guy does an incredible job. I mean, to do it at a school that's been a perennial basketball place, he has made them into a football uh, powerhouse to me. I mean, every year they've been in the battle for the East. Um, they're very physical, uh, one of our toughest games every year. Uh, well, speaking of the physicality, leads us to our next question. Toby and Flowery Branch, how physical uh, is the Kentucky running game? Extremely physical. They know what you're, they know what they're doing. They have uh, an offensive coordinator that came from the NFL. He runs a few different runs that people don't see in college, and uh, he has a back that makes him really good. You know, the back makes the running game a lot of times. It's not like you just have this magical uh, run that you run. It's, it's the guy toting the rock, and the guy toting the rock for them right now is hot, and he is really good. He's got great vision. Yeah, it helps when you when you do have somebody that can execute the plan, right? No doubt. And it's, it's great when you can execute the plan and you can make somebody miss. So you combine that with a good offensive line, and they've got guys, that, and the guy, he can, when he's one on one, he wins those most of the time. So you've got to have two hats there, and now you've got more problems. We saw uh, Ray Davis at Vanderbilt last season. Um, I was looking up his numbers earlier today. I think he had 26 yards on 12 carries. Um, you know, that was on the Vanderbilt team. Sure. Is, is he around a lot better players this year to, to help him be better as well? Absolutely, he is. He's got some – the tight ends are weapons for them. They've got tight ends that have been playing since 2020, 2021. They move people, got a really physical offensive line, and they've got an experienced quarterback. You know, the quarterback has started and played college football for a while, and that gives you a lot more uh, room to run the ball when you've got a quarterback that's a threat to throw it. Will they go much beyond Ray in, in their backfield? Do they have – is it a by-committee thing or no? Well, they use him almost exclusively. They have other backs that are capable. They have other backs that spell him and give him a little blow. But um, when the game's on the line, he's been in there. Toby, thanks for your question. We appreciate it. We've got more lined up for Coach Smart here from hashtag Ask Coach Smart. It's brought to you by Greenpoint Ag. 
Greenpoint Ag, farmer-owned and locally focused. We'll also grab some more questions from our audience. Our friends from Piedmont are here tonight in Athens for the show. And we'll step aside for this commercial break. We'll come back for more of Bulldogs Live with Coach Kirby Smart. Welcome back. Bulldogs Live with Coach Kirby Smart tonight presented by Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo is an official sponsor of the Georgia Bulldogs. And be sure to follow Georgia Bulldogs All Access on social media by searching at UGA underscore GBSM. Georgia Bulldogs Sports Marketing provides your inside connection to UGA Athletics with exclusive updates and behind-the-scenes content, and that includes the Kirby Smart All Access TV show. You can follow at UGA underscore GBSM. Our friends from Piedmont are here tonight as our audience here in Athens, and uh, our special guest right now is Wynn. Hi, Wynn. Welcome Hi. to the show. What's your question for Coach Smart? My question is, what is the most successful trick you play you've ever been a part of as a player or coach? Most successful trick play? You like trick plays, Wynn? My dad told me to say that. <laughs> <laughs> he threw him under the bus. Oh, man. I'm trying to think of the trick plays. i tell you what, the, the, the best trick play we ever had was the first play of the Mississippi State game at home when we handed the ball to Nick Chubb, I think, and he pitched it back to Jake Fromm, and then he caught it and he threw it to Terry Godwin for a touchdown the first play of the game. And everybody went crazy and loved it, and it was a great trick play. And the defensive coordinator on the other side was a guy that used to be at Georgia that everybody loved too, Coach Grantham. So he was really mad about it. <laughs> Wynn, thanks for being here. Thanks, thanks for your question. Appreciate the question, bud. You want to open the game like that tomorrow night or huh. Saturday night? Yeah, I wish. If it was a touchdown, I would. <laughs> Uh, let's grab some more questions. Hashtag Ask Coach Smart is how you get them to us on social media. It's brought to you by Greenpoint Ag, uh, farmer-owned and locally focused Greenpoint Ag, and we thank them for uh, sponsoring our hashtag. And uh, let's see, uh, Chandler in Monroe, Georgia, is Brock Bowers one of the best pure football players you have ever coached? Absolutely, he is, and uh, he's one of the easiest to coach too, because <laughs> you don't have to coach much. He is a um, self-motivated. Um, just just wants to be the best and wants to do things the right way. Very coachable. You tell him once, he does it. Um, you know, you coach a lot of guys like that, but you don't coach guys like that that have that athleticism too. So it's a, it's a lethal combination of he does everything right, he works really hard, and he's uber talented. Yeah, he's got that uh, perfect combination of, of the ability to do it, the, the right attitude to do it, uh, and then the, uh, the ability to execute what you guys are trying to do teach him to help him get better that's right he's, and he's already got most of that stuff already ingrained in him no question he is a competitor uh austin in jefferson georgia uh what is bloody tuesday uh bloody tuesday is a mantra that we have that we use as a battle cry for our tuesdays to be uh physical you know we, we, we feel like that if you go out there on tuesday and you uh, bleed in training is is better than to bleed in the game and uh, uh, that's 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 really we want to learn, see where our weaknesses are, test each other, um, even at the expense of, of, you know, sometimes being sore and getting after it. Our kids believe that it helps them win on Saturdays. That that phrase and that experience, that goes way back to, to Coach Dooley days, doesn't it? I, you know, I don't know. I, 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 when I was here, it was – Coach McDuffie would say it sometimes. Wayne McDuffie would scream it, and um, I still – hear it haunting me sometimes as I was out <laughs> at Flex, and I was like, oh, not another Tuesday. But um, I think they did when Coach Dooley was here too. Did you have one this week? Yeah, we had a good one, man. We got after it. They they, they were pretty physical. We took, we took a little bit of um, – we took some pads off on Monday trying to recover from the big bout we had with Auburn, and it made, uh, made Tuesday probably a little bit more physical. Uh, Cindy in Augusta, Georgia, sent this one in. Speaking of Auburn, how gratifying was it to get a road win in a hostile environment last week? Uh, well, anytime you go on the road and win the SEC, guys, it doesn't matter where. I just, you know, I'm numb to the fact that when you go on the road, you better be prepared. It's just not easy on the road. It's never easy on the road, especially not your first time on the road, and um, especially not your quarterback's first time on the road. So it was really the first time we had a road starting quarterback in over two years or three years once you count two back. So um, I was proud of the way he overcame some things, and, um, and he'll get better from there. Uh, Al in Lawrenceville says, uh, I saw the NCAA is reducing the number of days for transfer in college sports. Can you uh, explain 
if this will be helpful to you in managing the football roster. Thank you. Um, I, I, I'm not exactly sure what he's referring to. They did come out and – and, and they didn't it redu- it reduced it a little bit, but there's still I think 30 days, and that's all in one window. And then there's a second window in the spring, so th- that reduction didn't not, really change uh, that much. Yeah, I mean most people are busy with bowl practices during that time, and may- maybe I don't know what it was before, but 30 is basically have a month to decide. Um, so what happens is they get a lot of influences from back home. They get a lot of uh, people pandering and calling, and 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 so you get a lot of uh, of guys trying to make decision is is this the right fit for me um and you know to be honest with you it's hard here so it makes it tempting to to look elsewhere to follow along with with that question how much time would you say you you spend managing that roster you know between recruiting and and maybe looking at the portal and and who's coming back and who's who's going pro and and all of that stuff and and it falls at a time when it's uh usually when it's uh, the end of the regular season and you're and you're getting ready for postseason yeah, that's not exactly what it falls. It's not. It's not good timing. So you have people in your organization. You have a plan set up. You enact the plan. I only have so many hours in the day that I can do things. So you have to delegate and and try to be on top of it. And you know, it's not. It's not an easy time, but nothing is. I mean, it's part of what we do. It's what we choose to do. It appears to uh, to be a successful process for you and your staff so far. So continued good luck there. Uh, Lucas in Alpharetta, Georgia, wants to know how much confidence. Uh, does a comeback win like last week give your quarterback Carson Beck? Well, it certainly helps. Um, it'd be more confidence if you played. We all we all played well in the first and second quarter, so we didn't have to come back. You know, you don't you don't you learn about your team when you have to do that, but you also um, have put yourself in a hole that you're having to dig yourself out of. I'm not a big procrastinator. I think you should start early and get things prepared and do things on time. And and we haven't really done that. We we got to do a better job of that. Lucas, there you go. Thanks for your question. You can send them in on social media anytime. Uh, you can post them uh, to, with the hashtag AskCoachSmart. That's brought to you by Greenpoint Ag. Greenpoint Ag is farmer-owned and locally focused. This is Bulldogs Live with Coach Smart. It's presented by Wells Fargo, an official sponsor of the Georgia Bulldogs. We'll take a break, come back for more of your questions for the coach right after this on the Bulldogs Sports Network. Thanks for being with us tonight, Bulldogs Live with Coach Kirby Smart, presented by Wells Fargo, an official sponsor of the Georgia Bulldogs. Also, our friends from Piedmont are here tonight as our audience, and we thank them for being here. And uh, we'll take a question from our audience. This is Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Welcome to the show, and fire away with your question. Thank you, Scott. Coach, any comments on uh, Georgia High School Association's ruling to allow NIL in high school now? Yeah, it's interesting. I had a lot of uh, high school coaches reach out to me and uh, kind of lobbying and, and wanting, you know, different positions and how it affected them. And maybe, you know, every, every high school coach gets affected differently and every kid gets affected differently. I'll be very interested to see uh, how much effect it actually has. Um, sometimes I think it's much to, to do about nothing, but we'll see um, because really the communities in our state care so much about high school football um, there may be, you know, some communities, some, some uh, businesses that want to support NIL in their local uh, high school places. And it would be, be very interesting to see how it plays out because um, at the high school level, it's such a pure thing. It's an amateur thing. Um, there's so many other sports, you know, female sports, male sports that, 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 that do things athletically. So now it will be open to those. And as long as people keep their priorities straight, NIL can be a good thing. I think I've seen it work really positively with some players, and I've seen it work really bad with some players now that we're into it two and three years. And when a guy loses his focus or his, his want to and he thinks more about NIL than getting his education, I don't know that that's the right thing. And some kids look at it that way, and then some look at it as an opportunity to grow their brand and, and create value for themselves. And if you do that, then it's, it's handled the right way. So it'll be interesting to see how it affects the high school programs. Jeff, thanks for your question. Thanks for being here tonight. Uh, let's look ahead. Uh, brought to you by the Governor's Office of Highway Safety. The penalty for getting a DUI can cost up to $10,000. That's why the Governor's Office of Highway Safety says drive sober so you won't get pulled over. Georgia and Kentucky Saturday night is our look ahead. And, uh, Coach, what, what pops up uh, in your mind when you when you first think about that matchup on, on Saturday night? Yeah, it's, it's you know, it's going to be a four-quarter game. The, the games are typically closer between us and them because 
um, the games are, are shortened because both teams, you know, are willing to run the ball. And in college football today, some people don't do that. I think with the shrinking of the clock, it's going to be really interesting because they're they're averaging uh, less possessions than most teams in all of college football. And um, I think they're 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 satisfied with that. You know, they they don't they burn the play clock down and and they snap the ball with two and three seconds on the play clock, so the 40 second clock goes the whole way, and their number of plays have been less. So makes me think it could be a could be a short game. Um, but you just never know what you're getting into when you play these. So your encouragement to the defense will be to get off the field on, on Saturday night, right? That's always the encouragement, right? I don't want to be on the field. I mean, I, I'd like to get off the field, but it does make it more critical. Uh, that's our look ahead, brought to you by the Governor's Office of Highway Safety. Kick time is 7.05 Saturday night. Airtime here on the Bulldog Sports Network will be 3. The dog walk is at 4.45 uh, Saturday afternoon, and the gates at Sanford Stadium will open at 5 p.m. So those are the uh, particulars of this weekend's matchup. A couple of unbeaten teams going at it. Uh, back to uh, hashtag Ask Coach Smart and more questions from our social platform. A uh, guy in Warner Robins wants to know how much you keep up with the Braves. Yeah, uh, we were talking about it here earlier. I, I love watching the Braves and the job that Snicker and their organization have, has done has been pretty incredible. So uh, we watch them when, when we're free at the house. They're usually on our TV screen. And uh, they will play Saturday night against the uh, the Phillies in their first round of the playoffs. Uh, Riley in Bogart, Georgia, are there any new leaders emerging now that we are more battle-tested? Well, we had a lot of leaders, and those guys have, have led and. There's no never a time more you need leaders than when you're in a battle in the third and fourth quarter, and we've had uh, a couple of those. And and each guy, those those same leaders have stepped up and done a great job. Uh, I think we've got good leadership on this team. Uh, it, it seems like, at least from you know video I've seen and just watching the guys, it, it seems like a really tight, cohesive group, and and uh, everybody gets along with one another and really respects what the other guy's doing and. Uh, you got that love factor working in there too, I would imagine, to to make this team they're come together even better. Yeah, they're connected, and I think that's important. And we work on that in the off season so that we can survive um, tough moments. And they might be tough moments on the field for a player, like a fumble, or it might be tough moments because the guy's not playing. Um, but we stay connected, and and, and it's going to be a connected uh, physicality game this this Saturday night. It's great to see that. Uh, Will and Moultrie, Georgia, since uh, send this question in, how do you prepare young guys for such a physical SEC stretch? Well, um, they have to go through it. I mean, we, we, training camp to me is where you prepare guys and you say, look, this is how training camp's going to go. You're going to practice really physical five, six days, take one day off. Then you're going to practice physical five, six days and take one day off. And that's really what we're going through now. Um, we, we, we get days off because we get Sunday and we get Friday, but the physicality of each week is similar to camp. Uh, Georgia and Kentucky on Saturday night. Uh, you got a little extra time on, on Saturday, and uh, what does that give you as as far as the clock is concerned? More uh, more time to recruit. Yeah, uh, I think recruit, um, prepare, uh, walkthroughs. Um, there's just a lot of time there to bounce around, see some some other uh, sports programs. I've had some recruits I get to go go visit with, and whatever it takes to to keep your mind uh, occupied and, and and back and forth to the game. 7.05 is the kick time for uh, Georgia and Kentucky in Athens uh, this weekend. Hope you can be there for uh, another sellout at uh, Dooley Field in Sanford Stadium. And come on back for more Bulldogs Live with Coach Smart. Uh, we'll take a time out here briefly and come back for more questions for the coach. Our show tonight presented by Wells Fargo, an official sponsor of the Georgia Bulldogs. Back after this on the Bulldogs Sports Network. Bulldogs Live with Coach Kirby Smart is presented by Wells Fargo, an official sponsor of the Georgia Bulldogs. Thank you for being here tonight. We're uh, taking questions from our audience. Our friends from Piedmont are here in Athens tonight to uh, hopefully enjoy the show. And uh, we'll take a question from our audience. This is Walker. Hi, Walker. Welcome to the show. And what's your question for Coach? Appreciate it. Uh, so um, I don't know if you've watched the series Swamp Kings. <laughs> um but, you know, it's kind of all about the story of handling a lot of success and so forth. Um, Urban Meyer, one of the – I would imagine you have a tendency towards perfectionism. Um, yeah. How do you keep that at bay in the midst of a lot of expectation and, um, you know, just the everyday pressures of the job? 
Yeah, it's really hard. That, that's an interesting show. I haven't watched it, but my wife watched it, and she commented on it when I got home one night. She's like, well, you need to watch this, you need to watch it. And uh, I have not, but I've had a lot of people tell me about it, and I do agree that that's uh, – that can that can wear you down if you if you you seek and want perfection all the time and you got to realize that that's not going to happen. I probably learned to deal with that better through um, outside help, whether it's a uh, uh, sports psychologist that work with our team, um, just talking to people and, and, and acknowledging that that it's not going to always be perfect or right, and you got to be able to deal with that. And uh, I'm definitely better at, at managing that now than I was seven, eight years ago. I can promise you that. So you grow to kind of say, what is the best I can do with what I have and uh, be flexible and, and be able to adapt. And that's what we try to be the best at. Like we keep trying to say we're going to be elite at improving. Well, part of improving is realizing that you're not going to be perfect. Um, even though you seek perfection, you just try to do the best job you can with it. So that's something we try to keep getting better at too. Walker, thanks for your question. Appreciate you being here. Um, Rob in Gainesville from hashtag Ask Coach Smart. Uh, sent this question in. He says the dogs were good on third down at Auburn last week and have had success on third down this season. What are the elements in making a good third down conversion team? Well, the first thing into making a good third down conversion team is to be good on first and second down. Um, and that we want to improve on because we haven't been as good as we want to be because you stay out of third down and long by being good on first and second down. So if you live a long time on third and long, you won't be good at third down. Um, you just the law of averages say you won't you won't win enough of those to be successful. So, um, but the the good thing about third down, we work really hard on it. We put a plan together. Um, we have a, a quarterback and an O line that does a good job protecting the quarterback, and we got some guys that can win one on one. I think our offensive staff has done a good job putting together packages for third down. Um, but it's not something you want to be living and dying by. You want to get you want to you really want to have less third downs because you on first and second down you convert it. You know, like that's the elite teams. They have less third down attempts because they don't get to third down. Um, and, and we'd love to have that some. Uh, Steven in Lincolnton, Georgia, says, uh, from a schematic standpoint, are there any concepts that Kentucky has in common with opponents we have already played this year? Yeah. The, the, first of all, everybody has uh, links and in, in commonality in terms of plays they run, um, regardless of whether it's Kentucky or whoever. Um, more some than others. I mean, some are unorthodox, but, I mean, Kentucky's probably most similar offensively to us, and so we see us all the time. We get to go against ourselves. But but there's plays that people have run on us that they haven't run and they copycat from each other. I mean, we have a common theme of, of certain plays that have shown up in every game, whether the team runs it or not. They're copying the previous teams. So we have to try to stay one, one step ahead of that. Uh, Amanda in Atlanta uh, has a weather question. How much does the weather affect practice? And uh, with temperatures being cooler, is that a welcome change for Saturday night? Yeah, it's, it's going to be exciting. To, well, anything at night is going to be cooler, so we're excited about not having to probably deal with the heat. Um, you're at your best for a higher uh, amount of time, and uh, I think that's important. But weather it doesn't affect practice much unless – you know, we have to go inside or um, uh, it's, it's real lightning and things like that. Then we're, we're on the turf more. Cooler temperatures, does that mean less cramping or is that something, you you know, if you hydrate properly, the temperature doesn't matter? Yeah, we, 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 hope, we hopefully are hydrated so we don't have to worry about that. We haven't had a major cramping issue uh, this year. We play enough players, we've been able to stay on top of it. Uh, let's grab one more question before we uh, take a timeout. Uh, let's see. Michael in East Cobb, Georgia, how did a running quarterback last week make things more difficult for our defense? Well, he definitely did that. It was it was not only the running quarterback. It was the design runs by the quarterback, and there was uh, some eye candy there, and um, we didn't fit some of the runs right, and they did a good job uh, with the quarterback. And there's an extra element. When the quarterback runs, you got to have an extra hat. Uh, and we didn't fit some of those uh, as well as we should have. And, and some of them, we, we had plenty of hats. We just didn't fit right, and they did a good job. And uh, give those two quarterbacks a lot of credit for the way they did run the ball. Michael, thanks for your question. We appreciate them. Keep them coming to uh, hashtag AskCoachSmart on social media. It's brought to you by Greenpoint Ag. Greenpoint Ag is farmer-owned and locally focused. Bulldogs Live with Coach Smart is presented by Wells Fargo each and every week. Wells Fargo, an official sponsor of the Georgia Bulldogs. We've got one more segment with Coach Smart. We'll do that right after this on the Bulldog Sports Network. 
Hey, Georgia fans, if you want to do an NIL deal with a dog, go to georgiadogs.com forward slash NIL to connect with a student athlete on a sponsorship, commercial, appearance, an autograph session, and lots more. That's georgiadogs.com. Taking questions for Coach Kirby Smart here on Bulldogs Live, hashtag Ask Coach Smart. And uh, this one from Daniel in Savannah. Uh, Savannah has been the hometown of many Bulldogs. Recently, Nolan Smith, now Kamari Lassiter and uh, Warren Brinson. Uh, would you please tell me about Kamari and Warren's development and what makes them good Georgia Bulldogs? Well, they're both very talented. God blessed them with a lot of athletic ability. Warren has tremendous size, athleticism, and he is a player that has developed in our program. When he got here, he was probably not as uh, tough and what we say calloused as he needed to be, and he has grown into a really good football player. He's been part of that defensive line room where it seems like forever. I mean, he sat there and played and seen Jordan, Devontae, Jalen, all those guys play, and uh, he's grown into a really good football player. And I, I credit Trey Scott with his development and Warren's uh, buy-in to, to do things the hard way has helped him. And then Kamari is just a – a blessing. He's got so much energy. Um, he's one of the best uh, walkthrough players. I tell the kids all the time, if you could walk through a walkthrough like Kamari does, we would never have to practice because he walks through a walkthrough like it's Super Bowl 28, and he's he's out there trying to win the game in the walkthrough. And everything he does is with attention to detail. And I just have so much respect for players like that because you know they play good. They they play good because they take everything the right way, and there, there's no silliness. So I have a lot of respect for. Kamari's approach to the game. I get the feeling that Daniel, in his question from Savannah, wanted you to say they're good Georgia Bulldogs because they're from Savannah. Well, they are that, too. <laughs> I'll take two more just like them if they got them. Is that a, that's a pretty good uh, place to recruit in, in the state, I would imagine. I, I see a lot of guys from Savannah, a lot of those players uh, filter around the league, and uh, that's uh, some good high school football down there. They're all good in Georgia. All right. There's no bad area. I like that. Uh, let's see, um, Kirk and Macon, what goes into making the Bulldogs a very good second-half team? The dogs know how to finish, he says. Well, I, I, I do think there's a trait or a quality that teams have that, 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 that they really believe they're going to win no matter what. And I've been around teams that didn't have that, and I've been around teams that, that, that did, and this, this unit has that. The, the problem with that is if you rely on that and you think that's going to get you – where you need to go, then it prevents growth. And the growth we need is to get better. You know, that trait is great. That's, that's an unbelievable trait. We've had that, and we've had a lot of games around here where we didn't win in the fourth quarter. Lately, we've been winning in the fourth quarter. We've dominated and won some championships in the fourth quarter. Um, but we got to play better in the first through third, or the fourth thing will matter. Is it easy to figure out how you do that or why you're not doing that? No, it's not easy to figure that out. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of independent reasons, but you know, every year's different, and I've learned that, that you just never know what you're going to get, and so you take what you get and you try to make it better. And to wrap up here before we get out of here, uh, you know, final thoughts on on Georgia and Kentucky. You've talked about it all week long. Just the the physicality that you anticipate in this ball game and. Uh, what we'll see Saturday well, night. Besides the physicality, we need everyone listening to be really loud, okay? They they really haven't played a true road game, and we need everyone to affect the game. It needs to be really hard on them to communicate and do things offensively, and it needs to be louder than they've ever heard because if that impacts the game, then that allows our team to be more successful. All right, there you go, Georgia and Kentucky. Coach, thanks very much. Good luck this weekend. Thank you, guys. Go dogs. Coach Kirby Smart.